I reverted to the title which is less appropriate for this conference. So the, the actual title was why, um, why do the concepts in my head and, uh, and uh, quanta in nuclear bombs obey the same law of cups and caps? Uh, I reverted to this one because I'm reusing the slides and the main thing which I have to tell you about is how the application related to, to these caps and cups and, and to, the, to the topics of this conference led us back to solving a 66-year-old problem in, in pure math, in category theory. And this is kind of re re referring to that. Uh, but let me, I mean, I, I begin with caps and cups and, and in principle it, uh, I am telling you the story from, from the title. The answer is uh, why, what, do, what, do, what does the language in my head and, and nuclear bombs have in common is the adjunctions. And so what are they? They are these caps and cups. And notice that we're kind of going backwards. You know, first Lambic solved the syntax and then Plato or, or Socrates raised the problem of semantics, and, uh, and then we're stuck with both. Uh, so here's, here's some, some cups, and uh, they're not from, from Lambeck 1999, they're from Zelig Harris 1961. And he's analyzing the sentence which you don't see, which is, since you ask me, I will explain that because of the slightly improved weather conditions here, we have had to delay until tomorrow a performance scheduled by him which I must say we had hoped the critics would find more acceptable than the one they uh, criticized last year. And, uh, and then, then, then Harris uh, attaches a bunch, of, a bunch of cups to this, which, uh, which we all, I mean, so of course I'm not saying that Harris did what, what Lambeck did, uh, nor that Lambeck did what, what Discocat did, I'm saying that, uh, well, first of all, it's not that they were, that they were uh, pre-groups and then we attached caps and cups to, that, to them. It's the other way around. They were first caps and cups already in Zelig, and then Lambeck noticed that this is the adjunctions. And then we reconstructed that in string diagrams as caps and cups. And the, the idea does, go, goes, goes actually much deeper than, uh, than even uh, Zelig Harris, it goes back to, as, as Lambeck is, is pointing to Husserl and to Idukevich, and uh, it's what, uh, so Husserl was, was speaking about this in terms of opening and closing the brackets, which is the, 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 the epitome of, of, of what you'd call references in, in language, but on the other hand, you know, references in programming languages don't work all that differently either. So, so the, 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 this machinery, of course, uh, goes quite deep and we capture it by means mathematical in different ways. And uh, of course, this cocat then begins by, by uh, making good use of the part of the adjunctions which Lambeck was deploring not to use. Uh, Lambeck was, was saying, well, you know, we have these adjunctions, but we're only using, in, 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 in our current terms, we're only using cups, we're not using caps. And then, and then Bob said, well, but these caps are actually my vectors and, and I can capture both syntax and, and semantics in it. And then, uh, you know, there, there, there are transformations uh, in, in Cartesian form which enrich it all. They are, uh, if, we, if we go back to the brackets, we can all, we don't have to close the brackets, we can, we can twist things around. The intuition for that is a little bit like Feynman's story about negative probabilities, we borrow stuff. But in any case, we, we, we develop this mechanism of, <coughs> excuse me, of adjunctions, which, uh, which are expressed in, in string diagrams as, as caps and cups, and your, your cup would be the unit of an adjunction, and your cap would be, no, actually the other way around, since you started writing the, the, uh, the vectors on top, uh, would be the, 
the core units of, of the adjunctions and these units and, and core units in caps and cups, we see the, the, the way they commute. Uh, in pre-group signature, we just see that they exist and that they reduce to something. And then to step over to adjunctions, the interesting observation is that, uh, so pre-groups are, are, are these uh, uh, pose sets in Lambeck's case. Uh, the pre-group structure, ha everything having a left and a, and a right adjoint, just means that every sequence that you are deriving uh, has a canonical interpolants. And these interpolants you are, you're familiar with as your spiders. Now, Bob said that <coughs> spiders and pre-groups don't live together in vector spaces because we know that spiders in vector spaces, they're bases. And the bases are the most discrete thing that, that, that's there. Whereas pre-groups are telling us about the order of things and they are, they are all uh, essentially about sequentiality. But if we ask ourselves, what are the spiders in the world in which pre-groups do live in the world of free orders, spiders and pre-groups are exactly the same thing. And that is the, 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 the little result which you, can, which you can read about in compositionality. I'm, you know, of course, I love to advertise my, now I don't love to advertise myself, but I can't avoid it uh, because that leads us to, uh, to the adjunctions, because the adjunctions are, are our handle on interpolation in mathematics first, and as it turns out, uh, in quantum physics, and then, then, uh, then in, in natural languages. And this math result which, I, which, I, which, it, which it pushed us at, uh, as we were struggling with, with something which, uh, with something which, which was a, a, a nuisance, which is a nuisance in practice, which is a practical, but okay, so I keep forgetting and, and the lightning will strike me for that. This is very, very joint work with Dominic Hughes of Apple. And, uh, and you know, I mean, I've been walking around with, with the math problem and, and he's been walking around with the, with the practical problem and I would have never solved the math problem because it's, it's too difficult, it's, not, it's from, the, from the 60s, and he said that it's ridiculous that it's, that it's solved in, in, in practice, and he wouldn't have solved the math problem without, without me. So, you know, it's very, uh, and together, uh, so now, you know, what I'm doing, I'm telling you it's a bunch of math. People here probably don't have much, much uh, interest to, to, to pursue pretty difficult math which is in there, but my, my job is now to tell you that it's closely related and actually the complicated parts in, in the proof are closely related to the actual practice that, that you are, that you are uh, dealing with here, not only in the sense that they are applicable to your practice, but more, more importantly, and, and at least in our experience, the other way around, that your practice is actually uncovering something that is conceptually uh, quite, quite monolithic. So here I'm showing just an, another adjunction and what we're saying is that uh, just like in linear algebra, your adjunctions, your adjoint pairs of linear operators have canonical decomposition. Uh, and that is used, as, as, as most, of, most of you will know, in, in uh, semantic analysis. Uh, when we need to go beyond the linear framework, the, that same kind of, of uh, spectral decomposition exists in a much more general framework of pro functors in, in categorical framework. That's what we, uh, that's what we have here. We have, we have a way to diagonalize pro functors, which, which was proven to be impossible in 1970s. So how do we get to that? Okay, so finally, I mean, you know, my, 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 my whole talk is kind of how can I possibly say anything of interest to a conference like this? I, I have a passing acquaintance with, with, with quantum physics through, through friendship with Bob, and I guess I, I learned linguistics, uh, you know, my, my only claim to fame in linguistics is that I once upon a time in the 90s had a dinner with, with Chomsky to which Lambeck took me. So I don't have much to say, but let me, let me just delve directly into, into uh, linguistics now to, to dare to, to tell you what, how does this semantical part fit into the adjunctions part. So this is of course pure linguistics. John loves Mary. That is, this is what we have in every linguistics paper. And uh, uh, completely isomorphic phenomenon is that 
Cartman loves Siri and Alexa, and Cartman's friend, Timmy, loves his mummy and Burger King. And, uh, you know, we, we use love, it's, a, it's quite an abstract concept which we routinely use, and, uh, you know, you would not use it in, in discussion of ambiguity until someone asks you, so, so what do you mean when you say you love me? And, uh, you know, this is Plato's problem because in main Mino, Socrates was explaining that everything is ambiguous, every concept is ambiguous. If you ask, you know, if you say the simplest, the least ambiguous statement, I'm sitting on a chair, uh, and then dwell on it for a moment. In which directions are your associations going? Is this a hard chair? Is it, is it getting to be boring? What's the difference between I sit on a chair and I am sitting on a chair? So everything is ambiguous. Where does that come from? And Socrates was then saying, and Ch Chomsky is saying, Socrates was saying we get it from the heaven of ideas, and uh, Chomsky says we get it from the evolution. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the statement that everything is ambiguous, uh, it's not just Socrates, it's also Wittgenstein, he spent his life, and you can dismiss all of that as, as uh, your ranting of, of philosophers, but you can't escape it because, you know, it shows up in the practice for which you work. Netflix's problem was the following. Uh, so John, let's, let's take something simpler, not love. John likes action comedies. The examples of action comedies John likes and has given five stars on, on Netflix, uh, on Netflix from the 2000s when Netflix problem was put forward, where Indiana Jones, Theme America, and so on and so forth. Mary also likes action comedies, but the set of action comedies Mary likes are The Blues Brothers, uh, Lockstock, uh, Pulp Fiction, okay, Reservoir Dogs. So ne ne uh, Mar Mary has a different concept of action comedy. And then Timmy likes, uh, what does he like? He likes Buster Keaton, Keaton's General, and then the, the three movies about the good, the bad, and, and the ugly, or the one movie. Uh, so what is the next action movie that Tommy will like? And wh what are you left with if you're Netflix and you're getting this kind of data and everyone tells you action comedy and they mean something else? So what is the concept of action comedy when the set of action comedies which people like are disjoint? So that, that is the question which we ask. And it cuts across, uh, you know, the, 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 this is the, the, the problem of everyone who is on the web. Uh, across the entire scene of, of, communica of network communication. It's, just not, it's not just a Netflix problem. Netflix gave a million dollars to, to, to some people from, from Palo Alto for improving their uh, concept mining algorithm by, by 10%. Uh, Amazon has given itself uh, tens of millions of dollars for improving their algorithm, which is actually much more important than the Netflix algorithm. And Plato's problem, uh, as described by Socrates in Mino, is, is, uh, is at the bottom. You know, a child is born to know what is love, what you and I would have trouble to, to define. So. Uh, where do these concepts come from? Uh, and that is, that is then, that is then the, the, the problem. So now I'm going to rush through, through methods of concept mining, which are the most run algorithms on the, on the web, hands down, and, and uh, most of them you will know. And okay, so now I'm, I'm, I'm jumping over. This was the domain which, which was our job, the news streams. And here you have it through news streams. You, you may want to think of terms and documents or you may want to think of, of, uh, of these uh, users and you may pick your four favorite action comedies and everyone is, is giving you some data about, about their preferences. And then the methods, so how do we mine these concepts? It's very easy, it's, you know, they, they, they're very difficult philosophical problems, but they're very easy lattice theoretic and linear algebra problems. So in lattice theory, we 
for the concept will be, as you will see in a minute, the completely canonical notion of concept is a community of nodes. Uh, so we forget, let's forget, let's just reduce it for formal concept analysis. We reduce it to the existence of the relationship. We don't quantify anything. So Alice sometimes watches uh, NPR and, 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 and so on. And uh, this, of course, you can draw as a bipartite graph. And then, you know, it's a very simple thing to, to say. Uh, if the idea is that the concept is a community or a clique, maximal clique, if you like, then it will be a, a complete bipartite graph here. So here are, here are the concepts. I, I take two nodes. Uh, no, I take all nodes. So these two nodes are connected with everyone. This is, this is a, bipart a complete bipartite subgraph. And then a slightly smaller uh, clique of users will con 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 uh, correspond to slightly bigger uh, clique of movies or uh, whatever news uh, sources and so on. A still smaller <coughs> group of uh, clique of users will have a bigger and so on. So here is my decomposition of the bipartite graph through the concepts. A concept is a justification for association between uh, between uh, a node of one, between a user and, and an item. Uh, and then how do we do this lattice theoretically? Well, we make uh, the, the, the joint completions of our set of users and of the items, and uh, we uh, span a Galois connection between the two of them, uh, and the concepts will be what I just described, these complete subgraphs, subgraphs uh, will be the fixed points of, uh, of, your, of the closure operators induced by your Galois connection. Uh, so what we're given associations, you, you may think about, uh, and the concept will be a maximal clique. But then, you know, let's not forget the, the, the number of, of stars. We want to take into account how much any, anyone likes a, a, a movie or how, how many times does a term occur in a, in a dictionary. And that is where we get into uh, latent semantic analysis, which is the solution of Plato's problem for which people got Turing Award. And then, uh, so that's my, that would be a bipartite graph that my ma matrix, my sparse matrix, would be a bipartite graph weighted with real numbers, which are uh, your, your frequencies form uh, normalized in, in some way. And we play the same game. We have a matrix, and now we, the, the, the game is now the the uh, Galois connection corresponds to linear operators which are spanned by our matrix and then the closure uh, operators are the Hermitians uh, induced by the linear operators and now the concepts will be uh, the uh, eigenspaces. So what does this mean? It means that uh, the, 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 the user item matrix is sending each user to the linear combination of items which they're using, which means that the Hermitian is sending a user to the linear combination of uh, users which are, which are uh, using the same, uh, the same items. Or uh, we are actually measuring uh, proximity, if, you, if you're thinking of it in terms of, uh, of words and the documents, then uh, a word will, of course, be, be sent to a linear combination of, of the documents, and each word will be sent to, to uh, all the words that are similar to it uh, in a way quantified by the occurrence in the documents. So then, uh, what does it mean to be... Uh, so these, this linear operator then moves me to the words which are, so it's my association step, which are associated by these documents to each word for me. And what is a concept then? It is, it is a, a linear combination. It is an association of words which is invariant under this linear operator. So uh, we see that the eigenspaces, which are, which are the, the invariant uh, hyperplanes for, this, for the Hermitian, are the same thing as these cuts and the, Galois, uh, and the Galois connection, Dedekind cuts, which we have seen on the... So, you know, you see, you see in a way that, that singular value decomposition is just a version of Dedekind's con construction, uh, a la linear, linear algebraic version of Dedekind's construction of the reals, of cuts. 
So we're doing the same thing, and here's the singular value decomposition. You diagonalize, and along the diagonal are, are the dominance co uh, coefficients of your, of your uh, dominant concepts, and we then uh, decompose the, the, the uh, uh, matrix as bipartite graph. And so now uh, the context would be the linear operator which, uh, which map uh, each node to its associations. Concept is the invariant hyperplane uh, of associations. And uh, so a stationary association, a stationary system of association or the moment when you say, okay, so I've seen these things, I've associated things with them, and I understand. I'm not moving anywhere further with my associations. And uh, all that is well uh, until strange things start happening uh, when, when you scale to, to, to something the size of the web. Uh, and when you, start, uh, when you start applying these methods to, to what? To natural language, which is what we're talking about here. So, you know, for 2,000 years, people were trying to fly and they've been looking at birds and the best they can do by studying birds is, is glue wings to themselves and then uh, generate myths about Icarus falling from the sky because the, the wings get unglued. No earlier did they manage to really start flying before they stopped with the science of studying birds and put, put a, put a, 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 a hydrocarbon-based smelly engine on a kite and, and built, built an airplane. So, you know, science serves the good purposes of engineering uh, in all cases except when it doesn't. In some cases, in difficult cases, uh, it's better forgetting about science and doing just engineering until we, of course, build too many planes and start destroying the world. So similar thing is happening with the language. People have been studying how we speak, what, what, what is this thing that, we, that we're doing, and it's really complicated. And then they stop doing that and, and build these neural networks. And now, you know, actually this bot, uh, which is probably asking GPT-3 somewhere, what should I say now? It, you know, it, it, as soon as you look for them, you, 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 you can more easily find bots on Twitter than, than, than people. And, uh, you know, and it speaks some, some kind of English. And here's another, here's another thing about ambiguity. Not only is everything ambiguous, there are no meaningless sentences. Because ask yourself, what are you thinking when you're, when you're reading this? We're kind of saying, oh, it, it speaks, but it's, it's kind of stupid. It doesn't say meaningful things. Well, it does, actually. If you, if you, if you, if you wink a little bit, this is poetry, you know? The, the, all, all, all this means things, and, and it, 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 it speaks to us. And it is, if you think about, okay, I think next slide, in, in a slide or two, I'm going to say something about it. And then, you know, the problem is that birds and, 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 and planes then start socializing, and they fill the space, and uh, that the, the paradoxical things happen that natural language processing becomes a part of artificial intelligence, which sounds like uh, something that, that, that couldn't happen. And uh, yeah, so this is what I said, another, another uh, bot product, which I uh, found just last week, two, two, two three days ago, within, within five minutes of, of search. All of these uh, things are meaningful. So the question now that, that we have, so meaningless sentence which, which Chomsky tried to, 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 to generate is, of course, uh, uh, what was it, colorless green ideas sleep furiously. And, uh, and that should be meaningless, but here's what it means. So what, what can we do about this? How do we, uh, how do we go beyond this problem of, uh, of amplification? So, okay, so I haven't, I haven't actually demonstrated it yet. What is my problem? My problem is that on one hand, concepts are particles of meaning. Uh, two things are associated as soon as there is some concept. It's sufficient that there is one particle path. Uh, when we look, the, so linear algebraic model is complementary. It's the wave of meaning. Why? Well, because uh, the different paths 
by the virtue of, of, of matrix multiplication, they add up. So these are two, two uh, uh, extremely opposite uh, 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 models of network uh, information flows. So wave mechanics, this algorithm which everyone is using, the linear algebra of, of, of concept mining, uh, is the realm of theory of uh, interference, which is why, why it's also use, used in, in, in quantum physics. So, but what is happening there? The me what is the meaning of these numbers? So in, in the, in the linear, uh, singular value decomposition, we have these two components, uh, one, of which, uh, one of which measures uh, the, the, the level of usage due to a, to a uh, given concept. The other, one of, uh, the other one measures the level of utility due to a given concept. If we normalize them to probabilities, the fact that we are multiplying these matrices means that there's the tacit assumption that usage and utility are independent and that every correlation that we observe is genuinely, genuinely meaningful. So this is the, the, the epitome of overfitting. This is where, where every statistician throws it all away and, 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 and approaches it from a completely different direction. And what, what happens to us is that, that we, are, we keep using this only linear model uh, method which we have. Any correlation of usage and utility triggers recommendation which amplifies the usage. So as soon as you have issued the recommendation, you have, uh, you have uh, invalidated the tacit assumption of, of the entire recommender system. So every correlation gets amplified and monetized and we're living in this world where you know, every action which you perform, be it on Twitter or, or on, on, on Facebook, comes back to you and you're getting more and more of the same. We're getting these echo chambers. This was our problem. That's the billion dollar problem of Silicon Valley. So what did we do? I have a, why are you saying uh, five minutes when, I, when my clock says 12? Huh? My clock still says 12. I started, four, I pushed 40 minutes when I, when I started speaking. <laughs> I think we're having arithmetic problem because you know I, I don't think my clock would be going slowly. Yeah. Huh? Let's go ahead. Um, okay. So how do we deal with this? Concept associations add up, and uh, uh, to justify the correlation level. So now what Dominic told me is that uh, what, how they're hacking their way through this is that they're not using matrices of numbers, but they are recording secretly the events. So instead of having matrices of numbers, they're having matrices of sets. Now, matrices of sets uh, are, are known to, to all of us and, and to both of us as pro functions, at least if you have some, some structure on two sides. So instead of mapping uh, en entries of, of these matrices to numbers, so here I, for instance, would have, would have not uh, p weight of three on this, on this uh, connection, but I would have three arrows. These three arrows may be coming from, uh, from what is it? If I, if, I were, if I were adding this up as a matrix, I would have here eight plus four, I would have 12 uh, arrows under the assumption of independence but under the ass uh, assumption of, of, of having a pro functor where all purple or magenta arrows compose to a magenta arrow, black arrows to a black arrow and green arrows to a green arrow, I only have three of them. So uh, the dependencies have been captured and uh, I can moreover capture in the, in the uh, structure the dependencies which have been mined before so that uh, as soon as I have this categorical framework where I'm not calculating linear algebra anymore, but I'm manipulating uh, uh, pro functors and, 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 and sets, uh, I am able now to control the dependencies and to record them and to not amplify them, uh, except there is a genuine correlation. So back to the same original pattern of formal concept analysis and latent concept mining and, and uh, Plato's problem. Uh, where do we mine? Where do, where do children mine the, the concepts from? And now we have, instead of, 
uh, instead of a matrix and two linear operators, uh, operator and its transpose, or instead of uh, a, a adjacency matrix and, and Galois, Galois connection, we have a pro functor and two Kahn extensions. And these two Kahn extensions induce uh, two, two uh, mo uh, monads, and we would like to factorize this. We would like to again extract the spectrum through or diagonal form of your, of your matrix, if you prefer, and uh, factorize through it by, and now I'm speaking to, to, to people who, who, who know a bit of category theory, and uh, factorize it through a Cohen. Uh, but so, so can we really do this? We retrace the original FCA, LCA workflow. So we, we had the tight completion, which gave us the concept lattice. Uh, and now, uh, an, a special case of, of that tight completion is, of course, the, the Dedekind's construction uh, of, uh, of real numbers by uh, Galois connection of lower and upper bounds on the, on the rational numbers, which he had to do in order to, to not get several rational numbers in, in, the, in the reals. And uh, there we hit the wall where our, uh, our gentle uh, teacher Jim Lambeck back in 1966 finished uh, volume 24 of Springer lecture notes in mathematics by the open problem. It is an open problem whether there exists a superninf complete category. Superninf uh, was his proposal for co-limits and limits uh, with a superninf dense embedding. So if I give you a category which has some limits and co-limits and not all, and you would like to do the same thing like which you did with rationals. Rationals have some meets and joins, but not all. And you would like to add those meets and joins which don't exist there. But if, if number one half is join of, of rational numbers below one half, you wouldn't like to add another copy of half, which is what Dedekind did. So Lambeck asked, can we do that with categories? I give you a category and you only add limits and co-limits which are not there. And those that are there, you, you, you keep them. And, uh, and he, he, he couldn't get out of it in the, in the book, so he left that as the open problem. Six years later, um, John Isbell kindly writes a book about that problem, no, a book, a, a, a lengthy paper about that problem. And to not read this whole thing, you know, gives it the name Lambeck, <laughs> Lambeck Extension and goes on for pages to construct that Z4 does not have a Lambeck extension because if, uh, if limits and co-limits of which Z4 has none are preserved and Z4 is dense on a category, then he constructs a particular polynomial so that you don't have the equal equalizer of that polynomial. And, and, <laughs> and ends with, however, our immediate concern is negative. And uh, the, the, the problem got killed there. And this is where, of course, uh, like I'm saying, where, where I'm, I'm telling Dominic it's, it's ridiculous. I, I've known this problem for, for years. We can't go anything. And he's telling me, well, that's ridiculous also because we, we have been solving this problem all this time. We are capturing uh, these, the, this kind of completions. So what, what have they been doing? Uh, so the question kind of gets to, to, to the higher level. Isbell has told us that we can't have a uh, limit and co-limit completion, which will be limit and co-limit dense. So the higher level question becomes, what is the class of limits and co-limits, tight limits, such that you can adjoin them to the category and everything will be both limit and co-limit, tight limit and co tight co-limit, and these things would be preserved. So we need to adjoin those limits and co-limits which approximate everything. So the, 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 it, in, a, in a sense, if we're in a, in a post set and I uh, make a statement, I have calculated the meaning of that statement you can think of as a join, as a supremum. You as the receiver will be, will be getting my statement and you will be calculating the, the infimum. And if we're in a post set, we will meet, we will communicate. If we're in a category, and these are limits and co-limits, we will not meet in all cases. The question is, what is the family of categorical identity of events preserving uh, operations where we will meet, which is usable for, for commu communicating concepts? And that is 
that is what, what we did. And uh, maybe I will now skip because even my phone has died and not just everyone's attention. So I'm just going to go to the last slide and say, well, what we're looking at is, uh, you know, we, we're talking about grammar and syntax of natural languages. Adjunctions are grammar and syntax of mathematics. And, uh, you know, that we, we have this model relation between uh, signifiant and signifier, uh, the, the way the saussure would, would tell it. And math is all about that theory of invariance was finding the right signifié, signifiant for, for given manifolds. I'm finding, what is this? This would be homology. And that is, that is expe uh, 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 expressed, of course, through adjunctions. And the, the message which I have been trying to, to push through, for which this result is the tool, is that actually what we are looking at uh, is the structure of a junction, and that is, that is, that is the, the foundation of, of this community and of this Cocat theory on, 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 which is uh, on which it is built. Adjunctions are the theory of sign. They are, they are, they are the, the, our capability to approximate things from below and from above and to meet in the middle. Thank you. <laughs>